Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar for today entitled Reclaiming Your Time. My name is James Lim. I'm a business development and marketing specialist here at Brew Accounting, and I'll be your moderator for today. We'll also have a special guest later on. So take this opportunity to learn key strategies that made Dan successful in his business. Now, I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Joanna Stewart, Director of Brew Accounting. Joanna has a passion for supporting small business to achieve mind freedom, time freedom, and financial freedom. She has worked across the globe leading large and small finance functions to deliver strategic business goals. She founded Brew Accounting 10 years ago and has gathered an excellent team of professionals together to support you and your small business to grow and prosper. Without further ado, let's all welcome Joanna Stewart. Thank you very much, James, and thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Look, for the duration of this webinar, I'm going to actually just turn off my camera, um, but I will join you back shortly when we get to the questions and answers section. So the irony is not lost on me that if you're here now, you're already reclaimed some of your time. It's the people who aren't here that perhaps need to hear these messages even more. So well done for being here. I pre appreciate your making this choice and will endeavor to give you as much value as I can. Let's consider this quote, either run the day or it runs you. This reflects the theme for today's content. Before we get stuck in, I just want to throw in our usual disclaimer that the information in this educational webinar is general in nature and no substitute for tailored advice specific to your particular circumstances. To start off, we would love your feedback to the following questions. How do you feel when you are under pressure? Please type your answer in the chat box. To tell you the truth, I feel stressed. But the other thing that I find is that it actually invigorates me and I can get a lot done. So please type your experience in the chat box. We all have a different way of responding to stress. So here's what I'm going to cover in this session. We'll discuss why, we're all, why we'll always be busy and look at some mindsets that can help us reclaim our time. We'll also identify where time is being wasted and discuss some practical ways to free up your time. We'll discuss your next steps and answer any questions you may have. I do encourage you to take lots of notes and sub submit questions via the question tab. Remember to download the workbook if you haven't already. To kick off, let's take a look at why we'll always be busy. Here are my five reasons. First one, work expands to the time available. We often place our output, we often pace our output to match the timeline we have. Our team members are doing this too. Think about budgets or time allocated for jobs. When we have a budget, our time allocation, which can be rather arbitrary, it brings focus to how much time we have available for completion. Number two, distractions. We might have a job that needs finishing, but lack a clear deadline. So it sits waiting and we find ourselves procrastinating, picking up and putting down other seemingly urgent in interruptions or getting distracted. While when we have a holiday booked and we know we need to achieve certain things prior to going, we somehow manage to complete them in time and go on our holiday. The third one is our perception of busyness changes. And this is especially relevant for me at the moment where my son has just moved into secondary school. Um, so, you know, he's now gone to secondary school and he might have one hour of homework per day. Um, and he's trying to fit all of this in around his teenage tasks and he struggles. He thinks he's busy. However, you know, you get to a he will get to a university student and soon he'll experience an increase in workload. Um, and Although he, he can produce more, uh, he probably won't feel any busier than when he was at high school. 
And then when he gets into the workforce, his workload it will increase again and he'll feel really, you know, and he'll still feel busy. So certainly our perception of busyness changes. The fourth, the fourth reason we'll always be busy is that our perception is that busy means success. And I see this very much present at the moment in our society. Think about how we respond to people who ask us how we're doing. Do you ever hear anyone say, I'm bored or I'm struggling to fill my day? And the, the fifth point is that being too busy is often an excuse. When we have more time, we don't necessarily do the things we wish to achieve. For example, working on our business is so often put on the back burner. Likewise, we put books aside to read and somehow never get to reading them. How many unread books do you have waiting for, the, for that spare time? I know I certainly have one or two. In other words, we choose to work in the way that we do. So we have to make better choices about how to reclaim our time. Let's look at some helpful mindsets to get us started. I'd like to start off by quickly looking at the seven habits of highly effective people developed by Stephen Covey or Covey as some say. The first habit is to be proactive. Make the choice to improve your life through the things you can influence. The second is to begin with the end in mind. Your values are a framework for decision making. Use them to set your goals, then focus to achieve them. The third is to put first things first. Set your priorities and focus on them to avoid wasting time on unimportant and non-urgent tasks. The first three habits relate to managing and reclaiming your time. So we'll only be talking about these today. The other habits are thinking win-win, seeking first to understand, then be understood, synergizing and sharpening the saw. You may have seen this mindset before as we refer to it often. Today, I want to link it to the seven habits we just looked at. More specifically, the first habit, be proactive. And the second habit, start with the end in mind. Being proactive is about staying above the line and focusing on what you can control, not being a victim and saying there's nothing you can do about the lack of time you have. As confronting as it may sound, you're choosing to be as busy as you are. Spe more specifically, you're choosing to do the things you're doing. An example for us here at Brew of us moving above the line is we have always wanted to provide more education to our clients and in the past made excuses for why we couldn't. One of the big ones being that I didn't really enjoy public speaking. <laughs> Now we've gone above the line and realized that we owe it to our clients to do this. And we have taken responsibility for creating the time to make it happen. And surprise, surprise, with practice, I'm actually starting to enjoy a bit of public speaking. <laughs> Stephen Covey's second habit of highly effective people also ties into orbit. The habit is called starting with the end in mind. It's thinking about how you'd like people to describe you at your funeral. Without getting morbid here, if it's things like fully in control, successful in your business, always had time for, his, for their family, and you want those things to be all positive things, then you can start being that person now. So stay above the line on this and stay firm on your time management so you can be that person. The second mindset I want to share is Atomic Habits which speaks directly to starting with the end in mind. Building identity-based habits will enable you to better prioritize your time and achieve better results. By focusing on who you need to be, your identity, and choosing habits consistent with that identity, your desired outcomes will flow more easily. This can be at a personal level, but also at a company level, where the culture is the identity. A wonderful example of this was at my local RSL. It was tired and losing money. A new board was elected a couple of years back of which I was a member. And I led us through a st strategic planning day. 
we started by defining the values and identity that we wanted to stand for in our community. Inclusive, family friendly, and excellent customer service. It transformed our habits and the way we interacted with each other from the board right through to the staff and the members. It also ensured that the renovations created a space where this identity was created by default. The outcome is now a thriving club, which will continue to contribute to the good of our local community long into the future. When I pass, this, pass by this busy venue now, it brings a big smile to my face. Being clear on our identity ensures that our choices are aligned and habits form, which produce the desired outcome. From a, reclaim, from a reclaiming your time perspective, let's focus on your identity. Say you want to be more proactive and focus on what you, you can control, but you find yourself distracted at times. Imagine you set aside time to complete some of your business plan actions. Then an email or text message pops up on your screen or phone. This is called the queue. You can see there's a message and you want to read it. You want the dopamine hit that is called a craving. So you open the email. This is the response. You think to yourself, it's just a short email or a text from a client and you know the answer. So you quickly tap out a response and 10 minutes later you hit send. This is the reward. As you feel satisfied that you responded to the client's email and before you know it, you're on to the next email or text and so on and so on. What we need to do is remo remove the queue or replace it with a different one. What if you switched off your email and phone notifications while working on your business? The queue could then be the handwritten to-do list of your business plan actions created a day in advance. Then the craving becomes wanting to tick off each of the actions on your list. This, the response is to spend an hour on your business plan actions and the reward is you get to have your coffee afterwards and scroll through your social media or emails. So we need a mindset that reflects our identity. Who do we need to be to control our time? Only you can adjust your behavior. And if you want to reclaim your time, you've got to do something different. Let's look at what you can do differently now using the best time management model ever written. This is known as the Achiever Matrix, also created by Stephen Covey. By the way, if you haven't read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, put it on your reading list and read it. In a nutshell, this matrix reflects that we all live in a time pressured world with multiple overlapping commitments. Urgency is no longer reserved for special occasions. Sadly, I say sometimes. So separating tasks into these four quadrants helps us to better manage a flood of responsibilities, do excellent work and maintain a positive frame of mind. It directly reflects the third habit of highly effective people put first things first. We need to spend less time working in the urgent quadrants and more time working in quadrant two, the quadrant of quality. This is the quadrant of planning, prevention and innovation. This is where we'll improve our processes and is where we are most productive. It's also where we can prevent a number of important things from becoming urgent and falling into that disruptive first quadrant, the quadrant of urgency. We also need to access what things, to assess what things that are not important and are distracting us from working in the quadrant of quality. What disruptions can we minimize or eliminate? What strategies can we use to reclaim some of the time spent on non-important things? The first strategy to reclaim time is to utilize the productivity pyramid. Let's take a look. The pyramid looks at time versus your return on the time invested. There are five stages and strategies to maximize your return. 
And I'm going to work through uh, this, this pyramid with an example of, of, of a bar owner, let's say. So the first stage is to improve. This is where you can work on mastering your expertise or working better. New entrepreneurs will mostly start here. Example, someone opens a bar. They'll be learning new skills at work, new cocktail menus, leading a team, marketing, and perhaps working on the business at night, completing the myriad of tasks that any small business owner needs to be across, setting and reviewing achievement of budgets and key performance indicators, documenting the customer experience journey, and on and on the list goes. So then after this stage, we go to the next stage, which is to increase. This is where you get more people to do what you're doing by delegating and outsourcing. Now there's a bit more money in the bank. It's possible to start to build a team to take on some of the tasks that you have been doing, employing a bar manager, outsourcing your bookkeeping, management reporting, and marketing. This starts to free up the owner's time to be more strategic with setting the direction of the business and having time to lead. Third, we have invest where you can invest in technology to scale your business by putting the right tech in place the bar owner is now able to scale their operation in the hospitality space there is always a fine line between human versus tech facing hospitality service but truthfully if we go to the definition of hospitality the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests visitors or strangers, there's no reference to the underlying method. It more refers to the felt experience. COVID has presented an interesting opportunity for change. A specific solution that always fascinated me was the self-service touchscreen kiosk at McDonald's and why more hospitality venues had not implemented them. I personally prefer to order my meal on this than speak to a staff member. I see more and more venues moving to this tech-driven form of hospitality service, which allows them to scale with consistency. But this can be said about any piece of tech, be it a CRT, a cash redemption terminal, a good point of sale system, which interfaces with your CRM. Hospitality will always be driven by people, but tech allows us to scale exceptional customer service consistently. Then we can invent our own systems, or technology to create valuable IP or an, I, or an app. This for me is where it gets interesting because if you've done this right, you have excellent people driving efficient systems of best in breed tech, then you're able to scale successfully. You can either then scale or replicate your business to increase sales and margin. You can sell the IP technology, thus adding an additional revenue stream. Lastly, at the, at the tip of the pyramid, we can innovate, which in its simple form is working on better things. Perhaps you have some altruistic vision you have always wanted to deliver on. Once you get to this stage, the opportunities are limitless. So where are you on the productivity pyramid? Could you free up time by employing others or contracting out some of your work on the second level? What systems and software solutions could you utilize to free up your time and increase your efficiency? Improved systemization not only frees up your time, it also allows you to grow your business without increasing risk or workload for you. Are there other things you could be working on to derive a better return on your time investment? The COVID-19 envir environment has forced so many of us to think about how we can adapt, innovate, re-engineer, or reinvent the way we work. We're happy to discuss how to use this productivity pyramid to your advantage. Often, a fresh set of eyes looking over your unique situation opens up opportunities that you may not have seen before. Combining your expertise with ours is also always a great way to help distinguish the wood from the trees and come up with better ways of working. The second strategy to reclaim time is to stop working with the wrong people. Try to avoid working with people who don't pay your invoices on time, treat your team badly, 
don't live into your core values, are unreliable. On the other side of the relationship, if you have onboarded the wrong people, opening the door of opportunity to them frees up your time to spend with better customers or clients, and your team will thank you for it. Is there someone who comes to mind that you'd like to open the door of opportunity to? Strategy three is reclaiming some time is to run better meetings. I appreciate that depending on your business, some of you will run more meetings than others. There's value in having regular meetings if they're done well, whether these are 10 minute toolbox meetings over coffee and muffins or meetings with prospective customers, ensure they're efficient and valuable to everyone attending. Poorly planned meetings are consistently a top 10 time waster. Here are our rules of the game for running effective meetings. Number one, set a time limit and stick to it. If it's a toolbox meeting, make sure it's no more than 10 minutes. If it's a monthly team meeting, set the timing to 45 minutes. Check the time as you go through the meeting and remind everyone of, of the time agreed if it looks like the meeting will drag on. Number two, report prior to the meeting. Consider using a weekly team member report so you can see what your team have been working on, what challenges they have, the support they need, and what they have planned for the week. This will increase efficiency dramatically. We have a team member weekly report template that we can share if you'd like a copy. Set a regular meeting, a regular rhythm for team meetings. That's number three. For example, a daily or weekly huddle. We certainly have a, a, a bi -week, twice a week huddle and a weekly meeting on top of that. Um, so the huddles are usually 10 minutes. Having these meetings schedules, scheduled means your team will remain fully informed and you won't be repeating yourself to every team member. Likewise, you're providing a forum for feedback, so you should get less interruption during the working day. Number four is have a clear purpose and agenda. Make sure that every meeting has a purpose and a predefined agenda. This encourages attendees to prepare and minimizes the risk that the meeting will go off on a tangent and soak up unnecessary time. If, a, if an item comes up that isn't on the agenda, set it aside for another time to deal with that matter. The fifth point is actions, not lengthy discussions. If you've, received, if you've received your team member reports prior to the meeting and you have an agenda, then you should be able to make decisions quickly. If they need to be more detailed discussions, delegate it to the most appropriate people and set a separate meeting so you're not wasting everybody's time. Record your agreed actions from the meeting, who, what, and by when. And finally, such an important one, accountability. This is the check-in on the actions recorded from the prior meeting. Having followed up on regular meeting rhythms, make sure that the tasks get done. So how well do your meetings stack up? And what can you do to improve the effectiveness of your meetings? The fourth strategy to help you take control of your time is to do a 10 hat organizational review. The 10 hats is an essential mindset for business structure, leadership, and management. It clearly defines what roles in your business are operational versus those that are strategic. It also helps you draw accountability lines to allow for better planning, reporting, delegation, and time management, as well as helping assess resourcing gaps. It's important to ensure a business is sustainable scalable and ultimately saleable. The 10 hats reflect the 10 departments that exist in any business, big or small. Every department needs one leader, but remember that responsibility and doing are not the same. So the leader may delegate the work, but ultimately they're the final decision maker. So how many hats are you currently wearing in your business? And what hats should you consider removing? 
to free up your capacity to work on more important things. Doing a 10 hat org review will analyze the hats you're wearing well and those that are perhaps not your natural strengths or maybe even being neglected. Then we form a plan to ensure you take some of those hats off. More specifically, the benefits of a 10 hat org review are clarity of individual roles and how they work together, improved delegation and personal development for your team members, clear accountability lines, identify resourcing gaps and outsourcing opportunities, and provides for scaling up without blowing you apart. <laughs> Let's briefly consider some examples of contracting out or outsourcing to help you reclaim time. Firstly, marketing is an obvious option. Not every business can justify employing a full-time marketing person to create and implement their marketing plan, maintain their website, and deliver their email and social media campaigns. Finance is another common hat to outsource. Do you really need to be doing your bookkeeping, weekly reconciling to ensure revenue is converting to cash in the bank or your GST in the evenings after work? HR is a definitely obvious one, an expensive one to get wrong. And let's be honest, not, most, not many of us aspire to be HR experts. I know most of you all will be saying the same thing about accountants, but it's something I love, so don't hold it against me. IT and admin are other areas where outsourcing could minimize risk and save you time and money. There are many misconceptions around delegation. Delegation is a skill that should be mastered. Delegation is not flinging a task at someone and hopefully they'll do it right. Effective delegation requires communication. First, you must assess the task and delegate it to the right person providing clear support as they learn how to complete this new task. You must communicate the parameters, both verbally and in either an email or a written procedure. Ask your team member to repeat back the task instructions to ensure nothing was lost in translation and set a clear deadline for completion. Articulating the project objectives will help the team member further understand your expectations. Most importantly, set some time to review the outcomes together as it's unlikely they'll get it right the first time. Don't be surprised or offended if with the fresh perspective, they find a more efficient way of achieving the desired outcome. This is often a happy byproduct of delegation, along with improved trust, respect, communication, and productivity, which all lead to improved profit and happiness for you, your team, and your customers. Many people confuse delegation with abdication. Abdication is where you set your team member up to fail, ultimately damaging culture, communication, productivity, and so on. All right, so we're gonna ask you to share your feedback um, to a question. I, I didn't even have a look to see what your responses were um, around our first question, what do some of you feel stressed about? I wonder if I can still see, see those responses. Thank you so much, everyone, for jumping on and sharing your feedback. I'm seeing lots of feedback in the, um, in the chat panel. Thank you so much for that. Um, so this question that I'm going to ask you all now is, what will you do with the time created? Um, if again, if you want to stick those questions into the um, chat panel, that would be great. That'll help us to share our thoughts about what we've what we've learned and what we're hoping, um, what they're hoping, what you're hoping to do with that time. Um, we really value your input, so please share your responses there. It's a great opportunity to really stop and think about all the info we have shared with you and create one small or massive action that you can achieve by applying the, the reclaiming your time strategies and mindsets. Based on the atomic ha habits mindset that we shared, the clearer you are about what you would like to achieve and ensuring this is aligned to your identity, the more successful you will be at changing your habits and achieving the outcome. So what will you do with the time you have freed up? Five things that we recommend are 
there we are. So Liz says, spend more time with her family. That's amazing. Absolutely. That's one that we, I'm sure, all would love, love a bit more time to spend with the family. Time saved will be spent with what matters most outside work, family, friends, future planning. Absolutely. Yeah, I think all of us, we, we have that, um, we have that same feeling, don't we? So some of the things that uh, we would certainly recommend is committing to teaching others what you've learned, further consolidating your knowledge, spending time sharpening your saw, planning more effectively and being more commercial, creating better habits, and of course, taking time for yourself to ensure your health and well-being. At times, we can all feel the water rising around us. Stress, pressure, and lack of time can damage our ability to maintain perspective on what really matters, both in the workplace and in our personal lives. We know we must make time for our wellness, or we'll likely be forced to make time for our illness. Instead of trying to fit our important me time activities amongst our work commitments, let's flick that on its head and bed those non-negotiable activities into our schedule and fit the work stuff in around them. There's a lot of evidence that if we do this, we'll likely be to turn up and be more productive. Well, that's a lot of theory and we have shared that we've shared. And now we have the wonderful opportunity to hear from Dan O'Hara about how he puts these principles into practice. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining us. We're just gonna turn our cameras on here. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Dan. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Great presentation. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Dan, welcome and thanks for joining us to share a bit of your story and some of the reclaiming your time strategies and mindsets that you use to achieve your success. If you just give me one more minute, I'd love to just tell you a little bit about Dan. Uh, Dan is the owner and managing director of the O'Hara Group, which owns and operates several pubs in Sydney and wider New South Wales, including the much awarded Fairfield Hotel and the Central in Blacktown. These pubs both incorporate a green peppercorn restaurant fronted by local celebrity chef Tonner. I've known Dan for many years and I'm always inspired by his clarity of vision and his laser-like focus on caring for his team. I've been inspired by Dan's business growth and success. So Dan, once again, thanks for being here. So Dan, okay, we've been... Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Look, I'm going to jump in with our first question. Um, now, do remember that you can have an opportunity to ask Dan questions directly if you want to type them into the question um, panel. We'll be asking them of him at the end of these few questions that um, we have here. So, Dan, we've been working together for 12 years now. I'd love to hear how you've improved your time management through working with Brew. Uh, well, Joanna, um Look, we obviously started working with you. Um, we had two venues at that time, and I, uh, um, your presentation is very applicable to where I was at back then, and obviously very applicable to me now as well. But um, I was finding that I was spending time on on things that weren't really adding value to my business, and um, so we made the decision to, to obviously start using you for, for all of our um, bookkeeping, payroll um and so forth and what that has allowed me to do is to be a lot more strategic with my time um both from from looking at improvements in my business but probably more so to spend time with our key people um that that that, that in our team because yeah. i think the more time that i can spend with our key people and our key customers um that's yeah, generally um, important and your, your systems have allowed, have, have given me the confidence to grow our business. Um, you know, just some examples over the years that we, we were doing, we had a pretty clunky payroll system where we were just doing manual timesheets. And, um, you know, you, you suggested the um, uh, a key pay system, which has worked yeah. really well, the invoicing system. Um, you, we, we had manual, manual, we received paper invoices and then we loaded yeah. those into our into our um, system and you suggested a, that uh, light year um, which used to be caught in did box and that's really helped us as well so basically your systems have allowed me to grow and allowed me yeah. to be more strategic with my time and um, spend a lot more time on, on our culture because in my business it's all about our people uh, both our customers and our team mm. 
Yeah, amazing. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, so I guess the next one kind of leads from there. We know time is especially scarce for hospitality venues and businesses. How has focusing on increase, invest, and invent helped your business? Um, well, look, it's really, really helped our business. Um, looking back on some of your slides, um, all of those principles we try to get across to our team uh, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis. And probably going back one step with with using brew accounting, as I said before, it's allowed me to be more strategic with my time. And one of those things is trying. We, we've tried to get a clear set of values. Like we start with a clear set of values with our team, um, yeah. and we just we just use three simple values in, in our team. Um, the first one we say is fun because I believe if if our um, if our team uh, are having fun at, at work. Well, um, our, the, the other team members are, are going to enjoy working with them and our customers yeah. are going to enjoy being served served by them. So, I mean, Absolutely. If, if you walk into a cafe, you walk into a, 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 a pub, a club, if you're, you're met with a, a smiling face, a greeting and so forth, well, you, you're going to feel comfortable there. And so we, we really, so fun's very important. Being positive, super important. Um, you know, we want people that lift the people around them up. We, we don't That's want awesome. negative people. And, yeah. and, and then the last thing um, that, that ties in, we say a growth mindset. So that's just trying to always improve. And I, I love the saying, and I talk to my team about it, um, the, the All Blacks are a very successful uh, rugby union team, and I, I love all sport. Um, but the All Blacks talk that they've probably been the most successful sporting team in the world for a long time. I, th yeah. That may be debatable, but they've been extremely successful for 15 or 20 years. And one thing they talk about is that uh, if they're not growing everywhere, they're not going anywhere. So basically, they're trying to get improvements in their business all the time. Uh, sorry, in, in their performance or their, their sporting team all the time. And I just try to try to get our team to have that mindset as well. Like if, say, yeah, if, sure. you know, if, if with using brew, well, if that's allowed me to spend more time on my business, great. Um, Joanna, you're excellent. We, we might have a three every three months or every six months catch up yeah. and you'll go through some suggestions or have we thought of this, have we thought of this? Um, yeah. you, you talk about technology and because as you know, I'm not great with technology, but I understand the importance of it. Mm -hmm. And all of your suggestions over the years have been excellent um, yeah. and have allowed yeah. me to grow our business, um, to set clear expectations for our team. And and um, I suppose probably more importantly, we talk about time management, but probably the big thing for me is that, you know, I, I'm married, I've got four young kids that I can actually spend a bit of time up until, you know, four or five years ago, it was pretty much a seven day a week operation for yeah. me. I'm I'm still on the phone all the time, but on weekends I don't have to go into the venues, and it's allowed me to have probably a bit better work life balance, which has been very yeah, important yeah. in time. Yeah, abs absolutely. And I, you know, I really agree with you that the culture is so crucial to it all. You know, it's like th that um, Atomic Habits. It's really that core. Um, element there that once you get that right and then what you've done is is then build all of those people around you to be be following that culture then you you can step out which is what you're doing so you're now up at that top um at, you know the top area of that productivity py pyramid so i guess you know just very amazing journey that you've walked and thanks for your kind words and seeing how we've contributed a very little bit to that journey because really it's all driven by you um it's been a really important part of our journey joe and it's been 12 years and and it's, I, I feel proud that we've grown together as well and that's yeah, um for sure. and, and we've been through ups and downs as anyone in business will know um yeah. or anyone that has a going life that, that you know you just hope that you win more than you lose um yeah. but you know getting out of the comfort zone and and and, and trying different things and you know we, yeah. we've had we've had some pretty big failures over the years but you know, I'm really big on pushing the envelope to um, that, that, yeah. that that's where when you get out of the comfort zone, that's where the growth is, I, I believe. 
Absolutely. And recently I read something, one of my sons in his classroom, it says, if you have, if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough, you know, and I think that that's part of it. You, you have to expect to fail, but of course, you know, you mitigate the risk by making sure you've looked at all the different things that could go wrong. But at the end of the day, it's good to get out of your comfort zone as scary as it is. As is, you know, for me, some people will laugh at me, but even just talking on the screen like this is way out of my comfort zone, but it's been so good to do it. And, yeah. <laughs> and here's this opportunity to have a catch up with you, Dan, which is a real blessing. Um, I guess I'll go to this question. We sort of have covered it already, you know, how how is how is this better use of time helps you to scale up your business? But is there any one specific example other than, you know, being involved with us? But can you think of any example that you would be liking, you would like to share, especially I think with your staff, you're amazing with how you uh, bring your team on the journey with you? Um, well, look, firstly, be, because obviously, well, not because you're you're putting you're putting the presentation on, but uh, you know I think the big thing that gives me comfort in in uh, our business using your services is the trust. Um, obviously, mm. um, we're, we're in. A, I mean, it's not as much of a cash business as it used to be in regards to customers paying for things in cash, but obviously customers still buy that 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 they may. Um, you know, buy some, uh, buy something over the bar with cash. They may uh, buy uh, some food with cash. So having your um, your systems in place have allowed has allowed me to, I suppose, sleep a bit easier at night. And yeah. I I alluded to some of the failures that we've had over the years, and what you know, a few of them have been unfortunately that at the time our systems weren't good enough, and we've always yeah. tried to to learn when we've had issues. Where unfortunately money has gone missing um we've tried to learn from that and, and yep. we've tried to improve our system so i think um you know you, you're always your suggestions on on you know i go back to our third um yeah, our third value in our business we talk about growth mindset how to improve and you're always suggesting um have we thought about doing it this particular way uh and, and some of the things even though i've been reluctant because we all get busy and taking on new things can be hard, but I've been reluctant yeah. some, to take some of these things on yeah. uh, or changes to systems and then we've yeah. implemented it and it's been, it's been excellent. So, yeah, and, yeah. and I think you, you really understand the balance, especially in hospitality between understanding the tech side and, and, and making sure the back of house and, and trying to automate the things that we can automate, but yeah. then the importance of, people in hospitality business and i think in any businesses moving forward the relationships yeah. and the experience that we give customers um yeah. is is still going to be very important but it's that tie in oh, with yeah. the tech which which you you are obviously your company is very good at yeah 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 for sure and um yeah, I think, you know, the thing is that the systems have to be in place, but then people have to drive them, you know, and and especially in a hospitality business, it, it's the people who you've got around you that are going to be the ones that are going to make or break what, what you've put together, you know, so it has to be something that's going to be good, good for them, you know, so, and I think, um, I, I think that's a balance that you always play. Um, just my final question before we just jump on to the general questions is what's the one change you'd recommend other businesses should make to reclaim their time? If you had your final word. Well, I'm, I'm not very good at short answers, but I'd probably say and it's, it's I forget which slide, which side um, in is your it the presentation. Orbit one? It, it referred to, but, but what it, you know, we, we, I made a decision and I've got some really, um, I've got amazing people in our business and probably two or three in particular um, have, well, we, we, one, 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 um, one gentleman that, that is, is, has worked with us for a long time is now a business partner in nearly all of our businesses and we've grown together. Um, so I think getting, getting the right people on board is, is really mm. important and yeah. then so that's super important. And then the next thing I'd say is, you know, we, we do a, we sit down with our managers every six months and we, and we do a review. And one of the questions we ask them is, you know, but they're a little cliche, but we say, you know, where do you want to be in two, five and 10 years time? And some people, when they first ask that question, 
get a little, um, you know, I haven't really thought that way, but I, I just explain to them, I want you, I want everyone to, to, to take responsibility for the life that you guys want to have. And if you want to be somewhere in 10 years, well, think about if you want to get there uh, and then come back to where we are now and what do you have to put in place to yes. get there? And, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, put a plan in place, know that the plan is, isn't always going to go to plan, that there's going to be a lot of deviations. But yeah. if, if, if you've got a, uh, I, I suppose, a, a goal or a, um, a, you know, somewhere where you want to get to, well, yeah. And, and you're determined to make the sacrifice to get there, well, um, nothing's stopping you. The only person stopping you is yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, it's something that we, with the business plan that I talk about, you know, or, or all of that planning stuff, sometimes it's hard to step out of the actual doing, but it's the planning in where the biggest wins happen, isn't it? Because then you can actually set the trajectory. And what I find, the more that that planning, that I do that planning, it that the outcome almost falls out of the plan. You know, all I say is, okay, I'm going to do this. And then all of a sudden the world transpires to sort of bring it together. I mean, you've got to apply yourself really hard at getting there, but it, it really is quite amazing how that plan, and it and it, I really admire the way that I think you give your staff the opportunity to develop that plan. You know, you encourage them to develop that plan because sometimes they may not come to you already in that mindset but it's a lovely thing to give someone that opportunity to develop that plan with while working with you you know and giving them their a vision of what their full potential could be so that's fantastic dan um james i know you've been following the questions in the chat there are there any questions that have um come up from our attendees and would we can propose to dan at this stage Yep, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, we do have um, a couple of questions, but first I uh, wanna thank Dan for joining us um, for today. We know that time is very valuable on your side and also for everyone who attended. So we just wanna give back. And I do feel sometimes everyone do have like 24 hours a day and it's what you make out of those 24 hours that spells the biggest difference. Yeah. So. I'll read in some questions that were um, submitted earlier, and we have one here. This is for Dan or Joanna, if you want to answer as well. Um, most work cultures encourage to overwork. So how would you advise people to take a break and also invest in themselves? Do you want to add to that? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I definitely know that it, 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 that overworking is even something that I struggle with. You know, I, I think I'm turned on more than I, um, you know, potentially is good for my own well-being. And it's something that I work, work through it ongoingly. But more and more as I move towards this business planning in my life, you know, I find that um, I'm able to be more strategic about the use of my time. And, I, and I'm very much in line with following a lot of these things more and more now, where um, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, with with a plan, then you're able to use the, do those things in the pyramid, which is, you know, to in, invent and invest and, and bring more people on to do the work alongside you. Uh, and I think, Dan, it speaks very strongly to the point that you make about the culture of your team, because I think, um, when you have everyone working together, we we aim to find the best outcome and deliver to the values, you know, and I have a big, you know, big altruistic plan that I would like to deliver in my lifetime. But it's, a, you know, how do we get there all together in one piece healthy, you know, and I think that's what we're continually working on. What about you, Dan? Do you have anything to add there? Um, I just, look, I just think it's always a struggle to get the balance right. Um, I know when, when we were, my brother and I, um, we, we had a small venue in the city for, of, in uh, Gleep for about oh, 15 years. And starting off, we did, um, we, we were a bit younger then, um, but we, we, we didn't really have any work life balance. But I, I sort of thought that if we worked really hard then, hopefully everything would take care of itself. So I think anyone that's starting off in, you know, whether it's a bar or a cafe or, you know, a lease of a hotel or, or, or going up the management um, chain in a club, 
it, it is hard to get the balance right um, because, um, you know, often you have to be showing that you're keener than someone else. I, I've got a big saying that um, effort will always be talent. So, um, so I always believe that the people who try the hardest in the long run will do the best. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't mean, you know, just be doing you know, silly hours and so forth because you know. we, 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 we've got to get results and, and it's, it, it, it's a marathon, not a sprint as well. So, yeah. um, it, it, look, it is hard starting off to get that balance right, but if you've got that plan where you sit back and you think where I want to get to, well, hopefully you put some benchmarks in there where, you, you, you know, those first couple of years of starting off might be really long hours. And then you're scaling back and becoming more strategic with your time, um, yeah. and that that will allow you to have hopefully a, a better work-life balance. Yeah, excellent. I agree with you there, Dan. James, any Thank more you very questions? Much, Joanna and Dan for those wonderful insights. Uh, we do have one last question, and it's uh, regarding time management. Would you recommend to focus like one business at a time, and when is the good time to expand to like other venues? I'll let you answer that one, Dan. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, look, it's. I don't think I've never tried to profess that all the answers and that everything we've done's worked because it hasn't. And as I, as I explained before, there's been many things that we've done that haven't worked. Um, it is very difficult um, to, to to know the right time to expand. I, I would always. Um, you know, I, I would make sure you've got the right people in place to start with because you might get, if it's a cafe or a bar in the best location, but if you don't have the right people uh, and the right systems and the right support network like uh, Brew, Brew Accounting um, to be doing your payroll, to be doing your books, um, you, you might you might grow, but, it, it, it you know, if your systems aren't right, you're going to be treading water. So I think, um, and I suppose that's one thing I, when we were just running, my brother and I were running one venue, but we'd always talked about trying to grow our business. So even though when we had one, when we had one venue, we didn't have the, the financial capability to grow at that stage, but yeah. we tried to use that time. And I'd suggest that anyone that is thinking of growing, try to use that time to get your systems right, to get your support network right, you, you know, your right bookkeeper, your right accountant, your, your right solicitor, um, so that then if that opportunity comes up, you, you, you can you can pounce at it. And also, I'd always say, look at lots of opportunities. I mean, if you are keen on growing, you may need to look at a lot of different opportunities before you know it's the right one. So um, ne never think, you know, if you're close on something and someone's willing to pay more than you and so forth, well, it's a learning opportunity. Learn from it. How can I approach it better next time? Um, so yeah, no, exact, sure. no, no exact science, but I, I, I'd say make, make sure you've got the right people and the right systems. And then an area, make sure it's an area that is going to grow because I sort of, once you start to run multiple venues, you can't be as hands-on as you used to be. So you wanna make sure that the area that you're in is growing, I believe, um, because that way, even if even if your, your operation, the detail in your operation drops a little bit, hopefully the organic growth of the area will, will allow your business to, to, to move forward and be successful. Yeah, Great. I, I, I ditto Thanks, everything Ryan. you say that there, Dan. Um, <laughs> I definitely think, you know, the getting the people in place and then getting the systems in place. And once that's ticking over, um, you, you, and the, you then have your operations manager or whoever it is to make sure that they can continue to sustain that, then it, it's time, you know, to look for what's the next sta sta stage of inventing or um, innovation. So definitely, I agree with you on that. So, and I'll just one other comment I'll make, and, and it's it's it's, a, it's another thing I talk to our, our, our team about. And whoever asks that question, they're thinking of growing. Um, I always start because some people you, you might be you might have been doing the same thing for five years, and you start to get a little bit stale, and you think, well, what else is out there? What other opportunities do I want to look at? But getting back to your presentation, Joe, on, on mindset. Um, so Amazon, as we know, are very big company and they talk about different management principles 
And one of the one of the management principles they talk about is treating every day at Amazon like it's your first day. So I talk to our team about trying to treat every day at work like it's your first day. Your first day, you're super keen to get you to know mm. to impress your team members, super keen to impress your customers. So it's sort of on on an answer to to when is the right time to grow. But I'll also say there's often in your own business there's always opportunities to grow it within the own, in your existing business rather than going to another premises or so forth. So yeah, I, don't know point. That, I don't know if that's confused you, but. No, no, no. I think that's a great point because, you know, there's always going to be opportunity to grow, but I mean, to, to improve what you've already got, isn't there? I, but I love that perspective, Dan, because, you know, to, to bring those fresh eyes every day to your your daily life, you know, not only to your business but to everything around you. It's 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 fascinating, isn't it? It makes life so wonderful to live. <laughs> yep. That excellent, Dan. Well, on that wonderful note, Dan, um, I'm going to thank you so much for your time and for joining us today. Your sharing has been so invaluable, and we are all um, so grateful for your candid participation. Um, we are we we thank you, Dan. Yes, thank so, you, Dan. Good luck to everyone so, out there. And just go get Excellent. Thank you very much. If you do have to go now, um, I would ask you to please complete the webinar feedback on exit. Uh, this is so valuable to us as it helps us to know how to best support you and what topics you want to hear us cover moving forward. Um, for now, I would like just go through the final few slides, which is what are your next steps from here? Assess, uh, and here are my, my, my point of view. Assess where your time is being underutilized. This will help you become more conscious of the daily choices you make that impact your capacity. Get clear on the habits you wish to create. The ones you know will improve your productivity and focus. Planning for sustainable improvement starts with you and the le leaders in your business. The third point, identify your three most important actions. We'll be asking you to record these in your feedback from this webinar so that we can be sure that this hour has been powerful for you to in bringing about real change. And four, focus on what you can do instead of worrying about what is out of your control. And finally, we're here for you and we want to help. The information in this educational webinar, as I always would say, is general in nature and substitute for specific tailored advice and support. There are several ways that we can help you more specifically beyond today's webinar. Um, Firstly, we'd love to support you to complete your 10 Hats organizational review. There are many, so many benefits of having clarity of your organizational structure. Um, as we mentioned before, it supports you to achieve your business goals and desired lifestyle and frees you up to work on the business. As I mentioned, you know, this is really one of the core steps to being able to scale because you have clarity around what your, um, what your business goals are and how who's doing what and how you're going to get there. It ensures that you have a more sustainable and scalable business that can grow without you needing to be, work harder. And it increases the business value and readiness for future succession. During the 10 Hat Org review, we cover great strategies to improve your organizational st structure, to empower your team and free up your time. We can either offer this in a three-part half-day series or a full-day workshop with you and your leadership team. The next thing is accountability. Coaching um, is one of the most effective ways to deliver on your business plan and goals. I myself have a coach that holds me to account during my monthly accountability coaching sessions. We review how Brew is tracking to our business plan, objectives, and numbers. It identifies issues and opportunities and any follow-up actions not documented in the business plan that we are required for the month ahead. The price coded here is for quarterly coaching, which is, is a great place to start as this lines up with your quarterly review of your business plan to ensure that you're kicking your goals out of the park and supporting you to focus on the quadrant of quality for the quarter ahead. We highly request, we highly recommend the third one here, which is that you request the Achiever Matrix Worksheet from us. You can do this through the exit survey and it's a wonderful way to review what we have discussed today and set yourself three concrete actions you will make to ensure you live into your new Achiever Matrix. 
And finally, we would love to spend some time with you in a complimentary meeting if you're already an ongoing service client. We offer an annual complimentary client meeting. If you're not working with us yet, we would love to have a proactive accounting meeting with you to discuss your current situation, your burning questions, your financial business and personal goals, and how best we can suggest support you to achieve them. We had a client refer someone to us recently and she said, Joanna basically just wants to help make people rich. And yes, that's pretty much true. At Brew Accounting, our passion is to bring mind, time and financial freedom to the world. So please do fill in the exit survey and select one of these services. We would love to support you find mind, time and financial freedom. Nearly there. Before we go, I thought I'd share this quote with you. No, try not, do or do not. There is no try, says Yoda. Listen to the wise words of Yoda and commit to reclaiming some of your time. Make a simple plan today. Define at least three actions you'll take as a result of today's webinar. Write them down, whether they're personal action or actions to take within your business. Give each of them an owner and a completion date. Remember, if you need our support, we're here for you. I just want to find, close right. off by saying thanks for making the time to attend this webinar. We appreciate that your time is very valuable. Please do complete the brief exit survey following this session so we can continuously improve and get your feedback on what other webinar topics you'd like to see from us. Once more, I'd like to thank Dan so much for joining us and your amazing sharing. Thank you. We hope we've been Thank you, everyone. You plenty of ideas to ponder and some clear next steps for you and your business. Thanks, James. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everyone, for being here with us. Have a great day. Bye.